Hello and welcome to the third in my series of masterclass videos for Copperhead. Most of this video is going to be focused on the sequencer which is going to take up quite a lot of time because there's a lot of features involved here. Uh, but I also want to look at some uh, interface options that we haven't discussed in previous videos. Now by default when Copperhead is restricted for space it collapses the interface just to show a small panel. Pressing the full screen button at the top right uh, shows two panels and uh, in keeping with my usual design if we scroll the interface you can see the sequencer bolted on the bottom. But there will always be two panels visible whenever full screen is enabled. Now the orange colour scheme is um, pretty much a representation of the other name Copperhead, so orange copper, you know. But if you long press on the menu, we're always able to change the colour scheme to something that might better suit you. Um, not only do we have a number of colours, we can also even change the type of knobs that are on display. So if you're struggling with the colours or got a visual impairment of some kind, maybe uh, the contrast of some of these colour schemes will help. Now Copperhead supports two different types of aftertouch. Uh, one is uh, channel pressure and the other one is uh, poly pressure, per key poly pressure. And if we look in the settings, we can turn on these options. So I've turned on poly pressure and that uh, if you've got a keyboard that can actually send pressure per key, this is what you need to turn on. And once enabled, we can do very, very delicate uh, touches of the keyboard and get nice swells. Now, poly pressure is uh, one of those things that's only really available on top tier keyboards. Most keyboards have channel pressure and uh, we support that too. So if we go back to the settings, you'll notice that there's two items at the bottom of this menu. Uh, and I'm going to turn off the poly pressure and turn off channel uh, after touch. Notice also channel after touch control is set to mod and not velocity. And uh, the mod wheel control is uh, set to control LFO1. Now LFO1 has the amp knob turned full up so it's controlling the volume. So let's see how that works. Engaging LFO speed, that's something new added to 1.01. .01. So if we go back to the mod control and turn on LFO speed, listen to what happens as I press harder on the keyboard bed. Um, notice as well as the swell we get the speed change. <laughs> Let's turn our attention to the sequencer because there's a lot to get through here. So most patches don't have the sequencer enabled but it's very easy to enable it uh, just by scrolling down and pressing the power button to the top right of the sequencer window. Now that button is also reflected at the top of the screen so we can turn the sequencer on and off without having to scroll down. Uh, to the sequencer view and now when I press a key the sequencer will play immediately. Now if Copperhead is running in a host such as AUM or Cubasis or something it's best to turn on the sync button. Also if you are playing chords it is best to turn on the sync button so that all registered fingers uh, start playing at the same time i.e. at the next beat. Now we can just tap on these toolbar items to change the sequence length and the playback speed 
um, the gate, the gating, which I'll show you in a minute. Uh, we also have groove um, and um, we can change the scale if we want to force all keys to a scale. Now the gate can be used to truncate uh, the length of a note as follows. Now whenever we initialize a new patch we get these default sequence of settings. Now by default here uh, we're playing a mono ascending app and it's just one of various uh, monophonic settings that we have available to us. And we can just tap on the um, monophonic mode to toggle between various options that we have available. But if we turn monophonic mode off completely and play a chord, you'll see we actually get chords and not individual notes. So let's take a look at a little bit more uh, elaborate example. Now the first thing to notice here, I was only playing one key on the keyboard and it's down to this spread of notes within the uh, sequencer that caused it to play the tune it did. Now you'll notice as well that the notes are slightly different colours and that refers to the velocity and also uh, some notes are longer than others. So. The first thing I'm going to do is show you how to clear the sequence and we do this by pressing the menu button and then picking clear sequence. Now if I pick default sequence you'll get what you usually get when you uh, initialize a patch. But in this case I don't want any notes there so I'm going to head back to the menu, clear sequence and pick clear sequence and we've got no notes to start with. Now to add a note we just tap somewhere and hold uh, on the grid and then drag to create a note of a particular length and we can drag up and down while still holding that note to uh, create a note of a particular velocity. Uh, yellow notes are low velocity and uh, red notes are high velocity and uh, we can keep adding notes here until we build up uh, a sequence. Um, just remember here though, tap and hold and then drag either up and down to add velocity or to the right to add a note of a particular length. And what I'm trying to do here is as near as damn it, construct the original sequence uh, so you can see uh, how easy it is to construct that. <laughs> Now the number in the left column here represents the semitone shift and if I tap anywhere in that uh, in that left column I can change the semitone shift for that particular row. Zero means no shift, seven represents a seven semitone shift from the note you're pressing. Now to resize a note we just tap on the tail of the note and with our finger held down we just drag up and down to change the velocity and left and right to change the length. To move a note, tap in the head of the note and just drag left to right. To delete a note, just double tap on the head of the note. Now in this next example I'm going to play chords and notice the notes in the first column have now got a hash in front of them. <laughs> Now in this case the hash represents the uh, finger number of the chord pressed starting from the lowest note. So let's zoom in a little bit and take a look at how we uh, 
go from one mode to another and the secret is this little button the multi note button uh, above that left column and if we click on that we can select the default mode which is the semitone offset mode hence none of the numbers have a hash in front of them we have an octave mode which gives a two octave shift either side again you can manually change these by clicking on the column but at the bottom of this menu we have two new options including this one which is the one we use for the example now don't forget the actual hash represents uh, the finger number of the chord we are pressing so we can just click on that column and change them just as we did before with the semitone offsets and if we long press we can actually change between modes for a particular uh, row i don't know why you'd want to do that but you can now let's take a look at the uh, sequence options menu again because there's a few options in there that i didn't mention now in here we have the ability to load and save sequences we have an edit mode which i'm going to show you later there's a copy and paste for copy and pasting the actual notes from the note grid uh, we also have a monophonic mode which we discussed earlier if continuous pattern is enabled we just continue the pattern on every key press and we have a latch option to latch uh, the sequence um, and also there's a randomize dialog if you want to generate some uh, some automated patterns now let's take a quick look at the edit mode which allows us to control various aspects of the synth and uh, if we click on edit mode uh, we'll see a number of options such as cutoff frequency resonance x mod and so on but if i go back to uh, cutoff frequency just to show you how this works if i tap and hold and drag um, i can paint um, a controller into the sequencer now i can tap anywhere on a column and just drag up and down if i drag towards the bottom of a column you'll see that there's a point at which it becomes zero and you can literally paint that zero setting across the entire sequence but that doesn't mean that that's turned off you need to drag further down to turn that off otherwise you'll be sending controller value of zero uh, every beat So in this next example, we are using uh, finger indexes into the chord that is being played. And it sounds a little bit like this. Now, it's very easy just to tap on the little note icon and change this from chord indexes to semitone offsets. And this is with monophonic mode turned off. And as you can see there, if monophonic is turned off, uh, each note on the grid generates a note per key that you are holding. So we've got a set of chords there. And finally, I'm going to pick the monophonic uh, ascending app option. So there it was using a combination of the semitone offsets uh, in the editor and also the uh, notes the uh, of the chord that i was holding now this last example is using semitone offsets and if we look at the uh, the mode we're we're using an ascending uh, app monophonic mode but just changing one row's semitone offset makes a drastic difference Now some of you have asked me if it's possible to use the sequencer output to drive other instruments to double up and so on and the answer is yes or no uh, in version 1.01 .01, if you look in settings we have a midi option now at sequencer midi out but that only uh, only plays notes it doesn't play uh, controllers but uh, it's there if you need it so that's it for this video don't forget to subscribe to the channel and don't forget to thumb up this video if you found it interesting see you next time